Back in the late 1970s, one of the most exciting things you could own was a digital watch. Instead of trying to figure out the time from slowly rotating hands, as you had to do with an old style analog watch, you simply read the numbers of a digital display. Since then, we have got more used to the idea of digital technology. Now, pretty much Everything seems to be digital from television and radio to music players, cameras, cell phones and even books. It's easy to convert analog information into digital. You do it every time you make a digital photo, record sound on your computer or speak over a cell phone. The process is called analog to digital conversion. Let's suppose I am talking to you on my cell phone. The sound of my voice is really waves of energy that travel through the air to the phone's microphone which converts them into electrical signals. The sound waves and the signals are both continuously varying waveforms, they are analog information. A cell phone transmits sound in digital form, so those analog waves need to be converted into numbers. How does that happen? A circuit inside the phone called an analog to digital converter measures the size of the waves many times each second and stores each measurement as a number. If each bar represents one second of time, we can represent this chart by numbers. So by sampling the sound waves once per second, we have successfully turned our analog sound wave into digital information. We could send those numbers through the air as radio waves to another phone, which would run the process in reverse and turn the numbers back into sound we could hear. But do you see the problem here? Some information is going to get lost in the process of converting the sound to digital and back again, because the measurement made here doesn't precisely capture the shape of the original wave. It's only a crude approximation. What can we do about this? I could make more measurements by measuring the sound wave twice as often, that means doubling what's called the sampling rate. Now as you can see in the bottom chart, I get twice as many measurements and my sound wave is represented by more numbers. The more I increase the sampling rate, the more accurate my digital representation of the sound becomes, but the more digital information I create, the more space I will need to store it. When you download digital music, you might be given the option of downloading the same track at what are called different bit rates. Broadly speaking, the bit rate is the amount of information captured each time the music is sampled. So a higher bit rate means more information is captured and analog information is turned into digital information more accurately. Higher quality music tracks may have a higher bit rate but the tracks will take up far more space on your computer and take longer to download. Typically music is digitally converted for CDs and MP3 tracks with a sampling rate of 44.1 kHz, about 44,000 times per second. For the information to be acceptable, the sampling rate needs to be about twice the highest frequency of sound in your wave and since human hearing is limited to about 20 kHz, that suggests we need a sampling rate of at least 40 kHz. The typical bit rate for MP3 tracks is around 128 kbps, 128,000 binary digits or bits per second. Though higher quality tracks have a bit rate between 128 kbps and 256 kbps. One interesting question is whether information stored in digital form will last as long as analog information. Museums still have paper documents that are thousands of years old but no one has the first email or cell phone conversation. Open any book on the history of photography and you'll see reproductions of early photos taken by Neibs, Dagger and Fox Talbot. But you won't see any pictures of the first digital photo. Even though it was much more recent, probably no one knows what it was or who took it. Lots of people own and cherish plastic LP records that are decades old but no one attaches the same importance to disposable MP3 music files. A lot of information recorded on early computer memory devices is completely impossible to read with newer computers. Even floppy disks commonplace as recently as the mid-90s are impossible to read on modern computers that no longer have built-in floppy drives. That's why, though the future may be digital, analog technology will always have its place. Have any suggestions or questions to ask? Put them down in the comment section below. We'll be happy to read them out. And make sure you follow us at Facebook, Twitter and Google+. You can also visit our website alldayscience.com for the latest science news. And subscribe for more weekly science videos.